welcome to Unity of Charlotte, where our mission is to nurture a deep and mature experience of God through the practice of unity principles. Simply put, we are here to love, grow, and serve. I'm Lawrence Tolliver, a member of your board of trustees, and I am so glad that you chose to join us here today on Zoom or on YouTube. Let's start today's service by sharing our statement of oneness and let that lead us into our opening prayer. Together now, there is one presence and one power in my life and universe. God, the good omnipotence. Please join me in prayer. Father, Mother, God, we come knowing that you are present everywhere and at all times. We come being thankful that we are mature believers in unity principles. We come thanking you for the success we have experienced in these 36 Sundays, when we have not been able to gather together. That's it, 36 Sundays. During this time, we have deepened our individual practices of unity principles. We have experienced deeper meditation and stronger affirming prayers. We know how to travel this journey. It may be tough for someone, but it is not tough for those of us who have experienced the birth of the Christ consciousness within us many years ago. We were awakened to our spiritual nature and to unity principles. And we have stuck with the principles and the practices. We thank you that these 36 months, excuse me, 36 Sundays have led us into deeper meditations and deeper discernment of the truth about who we are and how this wonderful, perfect universe works. We thank you for accompanying us through Christ consciousness all along the way. We thank you for a wonderful community of unity believers here at Unity of Show. And we thank you that the path has been made clear to us because we have been available as procreative pathways for that future to unfold in a brilliant, wonderful, perfect way. With these thoughts of thanksgiving, we acknowledge that you are ever present within us, and so it is. Now, today's service by sharing our statement of oneness and let that lead us into more. Thank you again for being with us this morning and welcome to those of you who are joining us on Zoom. We open our Zoom link a bit before the service begins so you can greet one another. We also leave the Zoom connection open after the service so that you can talk with your friends. For those of us joining, for those of you who are joining on YouTube, we invite you to subscribe to our talks and to like the Unity of Charlotte YouTube channel. That helps you and others find our YouTube broadcast, which is available at all times. And we look forward to seeing you in person in 2021. 
On normal Sundays, we have a great program for children and for teens, and that meets at the same time as our services. So please plan to bring your children or grandchildren with you in 2021. If you or anyone you know is in need of affirmative prayer, you can place a prayer request through our website, unityofcharlotte.org. Our prayer team is always ready to join with you in holding you and your loved ones in prayer. You can also call Unity's telephone prayer ministry, Silent Unity, at any time of the day or night. Just dial 800 now pray for personal affirmative prayer. Now we do have a few announcements to share with you this morning. The speaker comes forth. The Monday Women's Lunch Group meets on the third Mondays at 11.30. Their Zoom access will be found on the website. The Unity Men's Group meets on uh, at the church the second and fourth Wednesdays from 9.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. They practice good health when they meet in person. So please come and join the discussions. Additionally, there is an affirmative prayer and meditation group which is meeting on Tuesday evenings at 7.15 p.m. It is facilitated by Barbara Rolfe, and you can secure the Zoom access again on the website. There is also a group a class that meets every Wednesday at 10.30 in the morning. It is called Dialogue as Service. And it is also facilitated by Barbara Rowe. So please consider enjo enjoying that conversation. And we also have a course of miracles that is taught every thurs Thursday. Uh, this is again a Zoom uh, connection, and it's, uh, it's from the book. A course in miracles. So if you want to review a course of miracles or begin anew, uh, please go to our website at unityofcharlotte.org and you'll find the, the Zoom link for a course in miracles. And finally, I want to appeal to you, mature members of our congregation, to consider experiencing being on the board of trustees. As we go into 2021 in January, uh, some of the terms of our current trustees uh, will, you know, run out. As a consequence, we need additional people like you to consider uh, becoming a member of the board of trustees. It is my pleasure to be able to introduce your speaker for uh, this, this morning. And it is Reverend Patricia Dreel. 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 Pat Dreel is a good friend of mine, though you wouldn't know it from that introduction. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to apologize to her. But I do want you to know she's a wonderful person who walks in her faith, always practices new thought principles, and has dedicated herself to assisting this community of believers to succeed in all that we do. She devotes tremendous amount of energies in getting that, uh, that done, along with other members of your board. So think about how wonderful it would be to serve on the Board of Trustees with our Vice President of the Board, 
of Patricia Dredd. She would love to see you at the table. Thank you, Jim.
And the day did come, and he heard word, and the British entered the town. And at this point in time, he had to hide very carefully until nightfall, mm -hmm. at which time he pulled his boat from its hiding place and launched it into the water. Now, his adrenaline was running very high. And so he, after he got into the boat, he rowed with great energy. And all that was on his mind was to put as much distance from himself and the British. Now, there was no moonlight that evening, that night. Uh, it was pitch dark. He couldn't see anything. But he, when he got in that boat, he started rowing furiously. Through the night, through incredible exhaustion, he rowed and he rowed with in, in his mind the British being farther and farther behind. And of course, the exhaustion became almost unbearable, but he persevered. And as dawn arrived, he was shrouded in the thickest fog he had ever experienced. And despite his weakened condition and his glimmer of not being able to go on, he did persist until that mist finally burned off. At that point in time, he was finally able to look around. And much to his surprise, and horror, he found that he was in the exact same place at the river where he started. Looking at the shore, he realized that he had failed to untie his boat. Now, when I first heard this story, which was right about the time of this adversity experience, I was deeply touched by the metaphor, and had a big impact on me. Because I had recently recognized that I was not able to get different results as I was tethered to my scarcity thoughts. Like many people, I thought I could run my boat out of my current affairs by just exerting a lot of energy. But that wasn't the case. So here's the story about adversity. Again, this happened a little over two decades ago. The company that I was working for had decided to close down my division. I was out of work, and I was scared. In fact, I was terrified. You would think the British were coming. We were relative newcomers to Charlotte, and uh, I was now out of a job. And work had always been a very important part of my life. And looking back now, I realized that the most difficult times in my life occurred when my job was in flux. Uh, it would always cause me a great deal of suffering and a great deal of turmoil. And this time, yet again, I was a mess. And I was just enveloped with anxiety. I had tremendous insecurity. And I couldn't shake off the thought of whatever demise, demise. Now, at this point in time, I had just begun attending a New Thought Church. And I was attending a class on Tuesday evening. I walked into the class. At first, I thought, can I even make it to class? But I decided to go anyway. And it was a good thing. And every time I thought about this job situation, it would make me shake. I went to a friend of mine in my class, and I told him how upset and afraid I was because my job had ended. I told him a little bit of a story, and I asked him if he would do prayer for me. And I kept shaking, so it probably didn't miss his, uh, his view um, that I was crippled by fear and that this was largely due to my scarcity consciousness. And he spent some time with me, and he asked me a few questions, and it was very interesting to me to notice the questions he was asking me. First of all, he asked me if I had enough money to buy groceries for the month. And I said, oh yeah, I've got, I've got that. 
He said, oh, and how about your mortgage? Do you have enough money to cover the mortgage? And I said, yeah, I can do that. Um, and then at a moment, I thought, well, maybe he doesn't realize how grave the situation is. But then he also asked if I had adequate transportation. Did my husband have transportation? I said, oh, yeah, we have good cars, and you're working just fine. He said, oh, okay. So I'm guessing that then you and your husband have enough clothing to stay warm and dry. And I agreed. But at that point, something was becoming obvious to me. That I was en enough afloat to pay my mortgage, put food on the table, shelter over my head, and dry clothes. And then I started to laugh a little because of the contrast between my response and what was my current real reality. And I was noting that my extreme fear response was out of proportion to the current circumstances. But I still needed prayer, that's for sure. His prayer for me had an immediate and profound effect on me stating the truth of the flow of life in abundance and telling me that I lived in the middle of that flow and that flow had never stopped. And that flow never depended on this job or any job. It just was my life because I lived my life in God and God was in me. Therefore, nothing could possibly interrupt that flow. Now, I've always been a good student, especially a good student of this teaching, and I immediately moved in the flow with this prayer. I was uplifted. By the end of the prayer, I was finally steady on my feet for the first time since I had gotten that news. And through the rest of that week, that was on a, I think it was on a Wednesday night, through the rest of the week, I stayed in that place, remembering, remembering, remembering. From Wednesday to Friday. On Friday, I received a very good job offer. It was not a job I had applied for. There had been no job opening. But I received a call to manage a healthcare company. That was a company that I remained with for quite a few years. I got a couple of promotions, and eventually I was named the CEO of that company. This was only the beginning of the most important decisions I had to make, this idea of staying in the flow of my abundance. Because I'll tell you, I made a decision I didn't want to suffer anymore. I didn't want to be in turmoil. I didn't want to be a mess. I wanted to live in the truth, in the truth of the abundance and my prosperity that I came into this world with and to experience. And I decided that day to never go back. But I also knew I had some things to do to remove my sense of my fear of scarce and scarcity thoughts. So I began the long journey of progress on that. I adopted a new way of thinking, inch by inch, that was congruent with prosperity. In other words, I decided to untie my boat because the past had proven to me that no amount of rowing is any good unless you untie the boat. I was absolutely and irrevocably committed to shifting to a prosperity consciousness. So what were the steps that I took? Well, my first step was to focus on my abundance and not scarcity. And while that sounds like an easy task, for all of us who have done that, we know it does take work because these are automatic habits. These are automatic thoughts 
that want to intrude on the truth of our life. But gratefully, I had a profound launch because the prayer that my dear friend did for me manifested in just two and a half days to a real good job. So it truly was beginner's luck, as they say. But I was fueled by this for a very long time and for all the work ahead. I was absolutely convinced that this works. Therefore, my job was to keep it working. Now, my daughter and I were together on Thanksgiving, and we had a wonderful time. And we were chatting, yes, about prosperity. And she shared a lovely story with me. At a time when she was working at the Latin American Coalition in Charlotte, which is a not-for-profit that does amazing work on behalf of the Spanish-speaking population, or Latino population, in the greater Charlotte area. It was a job she was absolutely passionate about and committed and very fulfilled in doing. Yet it had its difficulties and its challenges. Now, as executive director, she was responsible for fundraising. And every year, there was a cycle in giving. And that cycle was that their grants that they had received came in at the beginning of the year, in the February, March period of time. And then came a long, we'll call it a dry spell, until fall, when the fundraising activities came full tilt, and they got another marvelous income. But it meant that they had to keep up their prosperity consciousness all year long, even during that, in quotes, dry spell. Because they had to cover the salaries, they had to cover the office building, and they had to cover their ongoing activities and support for the people they had the opportunity to serve. So this was a period of time that my daughter uh, this dry spell that she found particularly challenging, but she's very well grounded in metaphysics. Uh, very, very well grounded. So she was very capable of managing her thoughts and her feelings most of the time, most of the time. But at a particular moment in time, she just hit a low point and she was really having trouble managing the ultimate truth, the prosperity of her organization and the prosperity of the people that they serve. And this is a story she shared with me. This occurred during my low period, during the low cash flow of my organization. Usually I can manage it reasonably well during this time, but this time I was struggling. I was really having a hard time getting myself in line with what I know to be the truth, that there is this infinite and unlimited abundance all around me, and I just needed to tune into it. Raspberries are my favorite food. So I went raspberry picking with my family. And this particular year, there was a bumper crop of raspberries. The harvest was incredibly abundant. Rows and rows of gleaming, jeweled raspberries hanging heavy from every bush. In fact, every cluster of ripe fruit, behind it was another cluster and another cluster behind that one. It was the universe revealing itself to me in the abundance of something that I just it was a magical revelation to me that day, a divine reminder of the universe that says only yes and never no. I really felt in that moment that I was in a natural cathedral surrounded by something I find priceless, delicious. And she went on to tell me in the story that she, from that moment through the rest of the period of time that we're talking about, was uplifted and on target, knowing, knowing 
because all she had to do was think of that incredible abundance of raspberries beyond which she could ever, ever get. In other words, her basket was truly full. So going back to my story, after focusing on abundance and not on scarcity, I learned something more. So this is number two of the big ones for me in terms of progress from adversity to, to, to prosperity. And this was to forgive everything and everyone. You know, when we were a younger family, such a busy family, my husband and I would sometimes forget our anniversary. Sometimes it was him, sometimes it was me. He never got irritated with me. I kept irritated with him. Now, one anniversary, he presented me with a beautiful gold bracelet of tiny teddy bears. I just loved it. It was of a heavy weight. And I received many compliments about it. It was whimsical and lovely. It was just delightful. Now, a few years later, we were having our floors refinished in our then house. And it meant total chaos because we had to take all of the belongings in this house and move them into two rooms and then move them back. And we were scattered for about a week, having these floors finished. And somehow during that time, the bracelet disappeared. People were coming in and out of the house. It was just out of control, if you will. Now, I've often said in my life, I really don't care about any belongings from my past that I no longer have. I'm really not all that attached to, I don't have that many sentimental things. In fact, I give away a lot of my sentimental things to people who can then enjoy them. And then I have a new thing to treasure, which is to work on their face when I give something away to them. But through the years, I always wish that I had that adorable place. That's the one thing that I miss. It had been gone many years now, and we had moved very far away from that house to the year. At this point, I was very engaged in my 4T prosperity class. You've probably heard about it. It's an absolutely amazing class that was um, taught, and the materials were put, pulled together by Unity Minister Stratton Smith. And I was deeply engaged and very excited about applying the principles of this class. And now I was immersed in a chapter on forgiveness. And I was diligently doing all of my homework, believe me. And some of the things to do during that, in that chapter that's from Stratton Smith are not the easiest things to do. I was making calls to people I hadn't talked to in a long time. I was writing letters. I was doing this. I was doing that. Now, because I'm a good student, did I mention to each of you that I'm a good student? I'm a good student. So I was coming home from work, and yes, it was our anniversary. And I remember coming up the stairs to our bedroom, wondering if you remember the anniversary. And I had a sudden thought. If you didn't remember our anniversary, it wasn't a big deal. He had a delightful way, and still does, of letting me know very frequently, and sometimes in some very funny ways, that he loves me, that he deeply cares about me, that he thinks I'm the, I'm the tops, I'm the berries, so to speak. So this idea, though, that it wasn't a big deal if he forgot, is kind of new. And I had forgiveness on my mind, and maybe, considering the current chapter I was involved with, I could forgive even before, even before I entertained resentment. Well, this really was a novel idea. 
I was kind of tickled by it. And it seemed almost revolutionary to me that I could stop in my tracks and not go into this well-worn path of, wow. But I was tickled and I was excited. So forgive before something happens. And this put me in an even better frame of mind. So a few minutes later, after I'd taken care of changing my clothes, I was just about ready to leave the bedroom. Something caught my eye. On my pillow was a card. It was just like this one. It was a heart. And circled in and around this beautiful anniversary card was the teddy bear bracelet. I started crying. I was crying from joy, from surprise, from amazement. And my mind was going through everything that had happened. I can hardly pull myself to go. I went to my husband. He was laughing. He was smiling. He later explained to me that a few days before, he had been going through something in the dresser. It was a box of his that he goes through quite frequently. It has uh, things of his, memorabilia, and different keepsakes and that sort of thing. And there in the bottom of my box was my bracelet. So my lesson on forgive even before it's necessary, because it is forgiveness for forgiving. Now, what was my next step? My next step was to practice the law of giving and receiving. Now, that law is based on the fact that everything in the universe operates based on dynamic exchange. Every relationship is give and take because giving and receiving are different aspects of the flow of energy in the universe. And if we stop the flow of energy, we interfere with nature's intelligence. Now, one of the things that I quickly learned was that I was short-circuiting the flow of exchange. It was another one of those leftover scarcity habits that I had. I used to think in the old days, many years ago, that as I was putting a check in the, the collection basket, I might be thinking, or likely thinking, what I could do with that money if I wasn't putting it in. In other words, I was putting it in, but I was taking it back in my mind at the same time. I was already building resentment around giving. Interestingly enough, when we think about money and the word currency, currency is derives from the Latin word meaning to run or flow. So I needed to get a new idea about this, which was being part of the flow. Money is the symbol of the life energy that I give and the life energy I receive, and it is a result of the service that I provide to others. And the same is true for all of us. So I began this wonderful journey of cleaning up my thoughts and attitudes and practicing keeping money in the flow. And like a river, money must keep flowing, otherwise it clogs and stagnates. And so does everything around me. And I was having none of that anymore. Every time I got a raise, I happily increased the amount I was giving to the source of my spiritual good. Sometimes uh, it enveloped more than just my church. It might be schools that I had gone to that prepared me for this life of abundance. It may have involved giving gifts to people that would surprise them and amaze them because they were part of the flow that surrounded me. I found as many ways as I could to be generous, to 
to be given and to take absolute delight, to let my heart jump, kind of in the way my daughter's heart jumped when she saw the amazing bounty of raspberry. So what became very important to me in this process was not just the act of good giving, but my ever-evolving consciousness in giving. And why was giving important to me? The intention behind it and the act of giving and the act of raising myself up in the process of being delighted, excited, and know that this was part of the good experience. You see, I realized I was not giving to the ministry in my building, although that would have been fine, but that wasn't what I was doing. I wasn't giving to the building that I was in for my services, no. I was giving to something within me, my spiritual evolution, my consciousness, my prosperity, the source of all my good, that indwelling me at the beginning of all of my life. I was contributing to my own life with a capital L. And so I smiled, knowing that I had now given up all of the begrudging aspects of that scarcity thinking that no longer had a single place, a comfortable place in my, in my life, in my thoughts, and in my own. There could be no energy behind that giving. I wanted energy. So the law of giving and receiving is very simple. When I want material affluence, I give material affluence. And I also help other people to be materially affluent. And as I did this, mine had grown. If I wanted love, I learned better how to give love. If I wanted attention and appreciation, I learned to give attention and appreciation. If I wanted to be blessed with all of the good things in life, then I learned silently to bless everyone with all of the good things in life. The more I gave, the more I received. And in my willingness to give what I was seeking, I kept the abundance of the universe circulating in my life in a phenomenal and increasing way. And I share this with you as a blessing for you. Because you are worthy, and you are worthy of an increase in all the good things in your life. So although abundance has a material expression, what's really circulating in all of these stories and in this message is consciousness. Why even the thought of giving, the thought of blessing, or simple prayer has the power to affect everything and everyone. Remember Wednesday to Friday, the job that I didn't apply for? We are bundles of thoughts in the thinking universe, and thought has the power to utterly transform. Now, as occasionally happens in families, others may not be quite as attuned to the application of these spiritual principles. I've occasionally, not often, encountered that as well. And when those opinions were voiced in front of me, I smiled with confidence. I simply pointed out my investment in learning and applying the finer aspects of attracting prosperity. I did it with a happy demeanor. And when that was acknowledged back to me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I would smile and say, and you know what? I'm never coming back. He knew that the family bank account was in great shape. And he knew that the evidence of all of the blessings, of all of the work, was there. And there in abundance, he not in the bank account. And 
it was a harmonious way to have my home of life aligned with some forward direction. Now here's an important caveat. Your prosperity is your business, no one else's business, only your business. I'm here to tell you, however you conduct your spiritual practice is totally up to you. I don't have any lesson in that. Your welfare is important to me. I care deeply about you. I want great things for you. I want a fabulous life for you. I want difficult things to disappear and good things to take their place. So you're my sisters and brothers. Your welfare is important to me, and I pray for your good every day. I pray for all of unity and each of you every day. So I'm asking you this. Do yourself a gigantic favor and practice the law of giving and receiving. Your life and your experience, I promise, will be greatly enriched as a result. I would like you to join me in prayer for a moment. To know these principles that we've been talking about. So just relax and take a deep breath. Breathe in. Take a And join with me in knowing the following. The mind of God is eternally good, giving and fully available to me. I believe that all of life contains soul and that all of life is God. I know that I am here living a prosperous life on this plane because I live in abundance. And I know that I joyfully and effortlessly Please remind me during the following days and the following weeks to untie my boat. It will make my rowing a lot easier. Help me focus on abundance, not on scarcity. Remind me that my berry basket is always full. And there's always more. Tap me on the shoulder to remind me to forgive early and often. Help ease my way in the practice of the law of giving and receiving, knowing that I keep the bounty of the abundance you have given me when I am in the flow. And help me remember that prosperity is my business. It's my business to make the laws of circulation work in my life, to keep my prosperity in the flow. And please prevent me from clogging up the works. Remind me to know and cooperate with living in the flow. Breathing in and letting it go. I am grateful to you, God, for doing the heavy lifting. For letting spirit work in my life in all moments of the day happen to be when I'm in the dry spell, when I'm in the flood, to ease my journey because I was not here on this plane for adversity. I was brought here to be in the flow of my purpose. And I let go of any idea that this requires hard work, struggle, or frustration. I know that the spirit lies at the source of all of my achievements. It begins with you, the source of all good. I align with nature's intelligence. And I pray that I remain in the flow always. I pray that each in our wide circle remember lives in abundance, is fully supported and lovingly protected. And I know that each heart is to be filled with joy in the days to come and throughout the holiday season. The deepest gratitude for unity, the opening of hearts, prosperity, 
knowing of one means and the joy of belonging to no one or trouble. I experience all of this today and in the days to come. And join with me in saying, and so it is. Amen. It is my joy to be with you today. And you be prosperous. If you're anything like me, you were impressed with that message. It was an outstanding message, uh, Reverend Pat. And uh, I want to again say to you, if you have desires to serve this spiritual community in a greater way, just think about what you'll be getting every time the Board of Trustees meets. Why don't you hold up your hand and get in the company of Reverend Pat Dre? Because she brings the quality every time that we meet. So now, let us get ready for our opportunity. This is your opportunity to support this unity community, your church home. With our online services, you have two easy ways to make your Sunday offering. You can mail a check to us at 401 East Arrowwood Road, Charlotte, 28217. Or you can simply use your phone or computer to make your offering online after this service. Just go to unityofcharlotte.org, click on the donate link. It's a secure and convenient way to keep your support flowing and your prosperity flowing. Now, I invite you to hold whatever you are planning to share in your hands and share our prosperity blessing with me. Joyously, I give this gift, knowing that the divine presence blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. We will close with our prayer of protection. Together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Amen.